So this is the J unit data driven framework. Okay. So I'll just tell you what a data driven framework is and what a keyword driven framework is and how practically both of them are different and when do we use a data driven framework and when do we use a keyword driven framework okay. or a hybrid framework. Okay. I have I have made a hybrid framework which is the mixture of data driven and keyword driven. Okay. Now a hybrid framework and a data driven framework are two different frameworks and the data data driven framework is a kind of framework which is embedded inside the hybrid framework. Okay. Now first look at let's look at data driven framework. This is a simple Excel file having some test cases. Okay. Each test case has got a run mode yes or no. Run mode yes means that the particular test will execute. A run mode no means that the test will not execute. Selenium will not execute that test. Okay. So corresponding to every test I made a sheet and in that sheet I have put the data. When Selenium runs it will read the data from this sheet. Okay, and it will execute the test as many times as the number of rows in that test. Okay, so if you want to execute a test case more than once, you just have to go give multiple rows. All right, now this is a simple data driven framework, the simplest one. Okay, you just have the run modes of the test cases and one sheet per test case in which you have the data for the test case. Fine. If you look at your um, framework, like I have already made this framework, this is the very one. The implementation, the implementation has got various packages inside it. Okay, and Inside each package, for example, inside the config package, I have the Excel file and I have got or.properties file which is having my XPaths, all the XPaths of the application which I am using. So, which I am testing, sorry. So, basically, in while making framework, I put all the XPaths at a centralized location. Why do I do that? That's because tomorrow if some um, something changes in the application. Fine. For example, this is this is the centralized location or.xls in which I have kept all the exports. Right? And these will be my selenium test cases. So all these test cases out here will be reading the X paths from the OR dot property. And tomorrow if some XPath changes, you just don't have to hunt each and every test case that where that XPath is being used. Okay. And change it. You just have to change it at, at the centralized location. And the change will automatically reflect in all the test cases. So that's why I have organized my XPath in one property file like links, input boxes, Xbox for input boxes, check boxes, text boxes, and all everything. Okay. Similarly, I have a config dot properties file in which you have got the URL of the application under test, the browser on which it, you want to work, and you can put n number of other properties as well. Like um, you want to put um, the path of your screenshots, the environment which you are testing on and it depends on your project and your project configurations, right? So after that we have a pro we have a package called data table in which I have kept the primitive file XLS reader which will help me to read the Excel file. We had talked about this while studying module 7 on the site qtpselenium.com in this module, while studying module 7, I had told you about reading the XLS files using Java. Right? 
So that time I told you about this XLS reader or Java. I have kept it inside this package. And in the data driven framework, I have a test base class. Okay. In this test base class, I have done some initializations and all. We look at it how we have work. I have done the initializations. And in the suite one class, tests.suite one package, I have got all the test cases which were there in the Excel file. I have made one test case per, sorry, one Java file per test case. If you look at this suite1.xls, then these were my test cases, right? I have made one Java file per test case. Okay? And so that file will actually get this test case. This is the runner, right? This is the J unit runner. Okay. This is this will I'll I'll tell about it later on, but this is how I have designed it. I have made for one suite, I have made one Excel file and all the test cases in that suite, I have kept it under one package. Fine. Now, this is how you will design the data driven framework and this is how the uh, framework Excel file looks like. In the end, you will also run it with AND and uh, you can also email the reports and all generated by JUnit and AND. We look at everything. Now if I talk about the hybrid framework, hybrid framework is a little bit different. J unit hybrid framework. In hybrid framework, you have a separate sheet for controller and a separate sheet for test data. So since I am using this, test data sheet inside it. It's also, it has got a data driven framework inside it. It's a mixture of keyword driven and data driven framework, a hybrid framework. Giving you a brief overview about it, it's also got a Excel, in the, in the controller.excel, I have a sheet defining the run modes, right? For example, for test case 01, 02, 03, 04, these are the run modes. And corresponding to every test, I have a sheet as well. But that sheet is a little bit different because in that sheet, the value of this keyword column will actually control the execution of your test case. Okay? And the data for this test case will be read from the Excel file. Okay? So this keyword column for example, input the username. This is the description for test step 02. The keyword is input, right? We look at it later on. This is the object name and data is all data column name. So everything is controlled by the keywords. Every test case has a certain set of keywords. If you look at TC04 or TC01, then in this as well, we have got certain set of keywords. All right. So these keywords will actually be responsible for driving your old test and the data will be read from the Excel file test data.xls. So this is a mixture of keywords as well as keyword driven as well as data driven. That's why it's known as a hybrid framework. Okay. And in this framework, we have got one minute. We have the reports like this. On the top, I have got the run date, start time, end time, release, production release, and each and every test case which was executed, when did it start, when did it end, if it is failing, 
this is the error message if you have skipped it this is the message pass skip if you click on it okay sorry um, okay 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 I didn't extract it properly okay but the description would be something like this for example for test case 01 this is the description this was the keyword and this was the result of each and every keyword click link pass okay verify text pass and if it is failing or passing you also have the screenshot column which has the screenshot for each and every test so each and every step right so you generate a report like this in the data driven framework the reports are little bit different they are more of an ant report okay in and you have reports okay I cannot show it to you right now because the RAR, RAR file has got a little bit corrupted but you have seen the AND reports right earlier as well so this is the AND report right it is it looks something like this so the reports are also different and you can also email your reports using Java code which we will be also looking at fine so there is a potential difference between a data driven and a keyword driven framework in keyword driven the keywords are driving everything in the data driven you have got one Java file for one test case if you look at the code of your hybrid framework it's also got the config package, it's got data table, reports, but in test script package I just have two files, driver script and keywords.java. Okay. Just two files are present in hybrid framework and they are responsible for implementing all your keywords and executing them. The, the data is also read from the Excel files. So basically if I talk about when do we use the hybrid framework and when do you use the data driven framework okay practically data driven is more easy to implement and it is more flex I, I find it to be more flexible right suppose uh, first of all all these automation tools they whether you talk about QTP self test selenium okay all these tools are required during the regression phase it is recommended rather that you should be using these tools during the regression testing phase when the application is stable fine so in case people they want to use these tools while the development time as well because during the development time the application is very unstable okay it's got a lot of bugs inside it fine so in case you want to use it during the development phase then it becomes a little bit of a problem because developing a framework during the uh, development phase is a little bit risky because a lot of changes would be going on, a lot of um, other things would be going on, some change, some change requests and all. So it becomes a little bit difficult. So during the development phase, we actually prefer using data-driven framework. Okay. Why we prefer, I will tell it to you when, as when we start with data driven framework, okay. But after the development is over, suppose I am in the regression phase. In the regression phase, if somebody asks me to automate a website which is stable, I, I can, I will prefer using a hybrid framework, okay. So this is the, these are two differences that you can actually that when when to use a data driven framework and when to use a hybrid framework okay moreover you remember that so I'd like you to watch this video as well once more yeah watch this okay but uh, watch it once more it's got an overview of how in the end the framework will be looking like what all we will be doing we will be doing the logging and all everything in it okay so better watch that video and we'll start with the framework tomorrow